All right, internet questions. First question. Kind of a paragraph with a question. Yeah, we got okay. some long questions. Jocko, I'm just curious about your opinions on the regular army in infantry. It seems like nowadays the regular infantry is almost looked down upon from the regular public and every prior military public speaker. I almost feel like we're looked at like we were just bodies that held ground and absorbed attacks and made no real impact on the war. I'm almost hesitant to ask because I'm not sure if I can, or I'm not sure if I'm in denial or if it's just pride. I served with some fantastic warriors and I don't want those heroes to be looked over in history because they were regular grunts. So I'd enjoy your opinions on this matter and if you could enlighten me on how infantry divisions are looked at from other groups and organizations. Yeah. Um, the, I'm, I'm, this question, you know, it, it bothers me. And it bothers me because if you couldn't tell from the opening that I did tonight, talking about the first of the 506, and I would tell you the same thing about so many other units that we have the utmost respect and admiration for what we used to call conventional forces, what they now call general purpose forces, but it's the, the Marine Corps, the, the U.S. Marine Corps, the U.S. Army, they're, they're regular infantry, they're ground powder, they're grunts. And we, like I said, the, the guys in my task, you know, the guys that own the SEAL teams, we have nothing but respect and admiration for the ground pounders, for the grunts. The, and for my position, you know, having been in Ramadi with the 228, which was a reserve unit for Pennsylvania, the Iron Soldiers, those guys were outstanding, outstanding. And then they turned over with the 1-1 AD, and you've heard me talk about them and the battalions that were attached to them. Those guys were just they, all of them, I mean, they were just so professional, so brave. And, of course, special forces and SEALs and Rangers and MARSOC and AFSOC, for whatever reason, special operations gets attention, right? I mean, the name is special operations, so it gets this attention. I'm not 100% sure where it comes from or where it started or whatever, but there's something about that the, the, the public and the media – and I don't know, the media feeds the public and the, 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 the public feeds the media and the media feeds the public. So like the public wants to see stories. So the media produces stories about the special operations types. And then it goes into a vicious circle, a vicious circle, and they just make a bunch of news stories about it. And so, you know, it's like this little mystique or whatever of special operations probably that's, that's, that's having that impact. But let me tell you, just for everybody, for anyone that's on that's not been in the military that has that, you know, thinks, oh, the special operations guys must be more, you know, elite or do more dangerous stuff. Wrong. Wrong. Do they do dangerous stuff? Yes. But, you know, I've been all, you know, when I was in Iraq, my first deployment to Iraq went all over Iraq. And spec second deployment stayed in Ramadi. But I, during that time, saw the conventional units, the general purpose forces, the ground pounders, the grunts, the Marine Corps, and not just them, but I talked about this last time, the, the logistics folks. I mean, so it's everybody. They're out there. They're living in forward operating bases. They're living in combat outposts in the middle of cities, you know, small groups out there eating MREs, just living in really tough conditions, doing daytime patrols in horrible areas, working with Iraqi soldiers, uh, you know, like I just said, they're doing these logistics runs. You know, these are where you get blown up with an IED. These are where you get ambushed. I mean, this is what they did all the time, every day. This was their job. Even like the mine clearance operations. You know, mine. you're going out and you're going out to go and get blown up or try and look for things that are going to blow you up. And, and you know, for sure you've got some guys that are in the big mine protected vehicles. But when we were in Ramadi, there was a Marine Corps unit that would follow behind those guys. Sometimes an army unit that would follow behind those guys. Infantry guys just out there getting after it. Mm -hmm. And so, what do we think of that? I mean, I have just admiration, respect, and just utmost uh, the utmost. I hold, hold those guys in the highest esteem um, because they held the line. So, to to that guy out there that asked that question, um, believe me, anybody that's been in combat and knows what you guys do, and I spread that word all the time. You listen to any. 
even if you read if you read Leif and I's book, I mean, we talk about that in great detail about the respect and admiration we had for for the general purpose forces, the grunts, the ground pounders, the bravest, the most professional, the most dedicated people that I could ever imagine. And I was absolutely honored and everyone in my SEAL task unit was honored and humbled to have served with such brave warriors. So that's how I feel about our U.S. military.